Texas A&M has uh, let go of or has allowed to leave the offensive coordinator, Daryl Dickey. He has been with Jimbo Fisher since he uh, got to College Station. This is five years now that Daryl Dickey has been the OC, and this is not something that was completely unexpected, right? I believe that Fisher, after this season, realizes there had to be some kind of change made, that he has to have some kind of uh, modern offensive system installed in College Station. And the way that you do that, which obviously you see nobody has come after Daryl Dickey, the, what goes on in Tuscaloosa, etc., uh, happens at a lot of the really successful places. When you have a good year, your staff gets poached, you bring in new ideas. It gives you a chance to kind of refresh, uh, come up with new things that allow you to be successful going forward because you have to adapt. Ironically, Dabo Sweeney talked about this back in 2015 before the team made their first CFP. He talked about the fact that you have to continue adapting and evolving. Uh, otherwise, you will eventually start to decline. You can't stay the same forever because other teams will catch up to you and they will pass you. They will find ways. And Alabama did this, right? If, if you compare yourself to Alabama, which is what they do in College Station, then you have to be able to adapt as well. This Alabama offense looks nothing like what they looked like in 2015. It just doesn't. When Lane Kiffin was brought in in 2014, he was tasked with uh, redefining what the Alabama offensive system would be. At Texas A&M, it's the exact same thing. Now, do I believe that Jimbo Fisher is going to stop calling plays? No, I do not believe that whatsoever. Uh, but you can look at things like what LSU did in 2019. Steve, uh, Steve Insminger was the offensive coordinator in 2016 when Ed Orgeron was the uh, interim uh, head coach. Right, They brought in Joe Brady to be the quarterback's coach and the passing game coordinator. And Insminger was still the play caller, but he learned things from Joe Brady that he didn't really know that he could put into that offense before. Look at the way that they ran that offense in 2016 in Baton Rouge. A lot of runs with Darius Geis, etc. Uh, you didn't have a whole lot of a downfield passing threat. What you did have, once you got to 2019, was, eh, you know, a pretty good, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a pretty good uh, passing offense. You know, with Joe Burrow and whatnot, you had a lot of talent there that was not being utilized, and it's kind of the same thing with Texas A&M right now. You got a lot of talent, and you're not able to get them the easy yards, the easy plays. You can't scheme guys open. Everything has to be done to perfection, and that's just not the way uh, that college offenses are run these days. You cannot come in with some super complicated scheme and expect the young players to be able to catch it right off the bat. And you're going to lose these guys. Some of these guys you will lose. They will not develop in your program. They are going to continue to move, and that will continue on with the transfer portal, etc. So this is a, a big, big deal for Jimbo Fisher. Now the question is, you know, a lot of people are bringing up names like Garrett Riley, for offensive coordinator, he is, of course, at TCU right now, and he's uh, coaching under Sonny Dykes. Is somebody like Garrett Riley going to want to go somewhere where they can call the plays? Or are they going to want to go somewhere where they are just involved with the game planning and the practice reps and all that, right? Kenny Dillingham, for a very, very long time, was just the game plan guy. He was the guy that implemented the offense. And once he got his shot at Oregon, remember, Oregon is the first time that Kenny Dillingham has gotten to call plays because he coached under Mike Norvell uh, at Memphis, and then he went to Auburn under Gus Malzahn, and then he went back to Norvell at Florida State, and then he went to Oregon and was actually the play caller out there on offense. Uh, Oregon's offense has been pretty good this year. Pretty good. Uh, maybe sands the second half of that Oregon State game, but regardless, <laughs> uh, what you're seeing here is, you know, uh, a chance for Jimbo Fisher to find somebody that can help him uh, understand modern offensive football. And I think that is a very, very good thing. I don't have a clue who it is that they would go after, but I, I do know what I think it is that they are trying to find, and that is somebody that will help teach uh, a new offensive scheme at Texas a &M. That's the biggest thing is help Jimbo Fisher relearn what it is that he is missing about modern college football and the ability to maybe steal yards right? Find those hidden yards that you can take advantage of, right? There are always going to be open spots on the field somewhere. You got to be able to get the ball out there, even if it's just an easy play, right? You've got to be able to do that as opposed to, for example, the, uh, the last second play where they were on the two yard line with a chance to beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa this year. And he runs, uh, he's got a, a freshman quarterback with a effectively a backup quarterback in Haynes King at that point that there's not a lot of chemistry, but it's a route that had to be executed to perfection right over in the corner of the end zone. And it, he didn't even throw it to the end zone uh, because of where the guy was running the route. And it's, you, you can't expect perfect execution on every single play. So you got to find a way to be able to steal yards. I think Jimbo Fisher is going to be able to do that going forward, finding out 
how to run a modern college offense. So cheers to A&M for, uh, for making a move and uh, hopefully adapting in this new age of college football. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.